Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the Vixen SA-70S. This telescope dates from 1979-1980, something like that. It's a triplet semi-apochromat, 70 millimeters in aperture. If that sounds sort of reminiscent of the TS-65P type, uh, I don't think that's uh, by mistake. I think Vixen was imitating the TS-65P, which had been by all accounts, a rousing success. The TS-65P is a 65 millimeter triplet semi-apochromat. 70 millimeter triplet semi-apochromat. And a little portable mount, fits in a suitcase, so much like the TS-65P type that you can't believe it. Except for the looks, of course. A little bit different. It's a bit bigger, a bit bulkier, but other than that, it's basically a very, very similar telescope. Let's have a close look at this. Notice that I'm seated to use this scope. It's very comfortable for a seated observer, uh, not great for someone who's standing. But the idea was for this all to be very compact and portable and fold up into a small package. Anyway, when you're seated or maybe sitting on the ground, the Japanese would often have been sitting on the ground, looking straight through. They prefer straight through viewing. Uh, it's not too bad for this kind of position. I'm in a chair and it's not bad. This is a very nice mount. This, this mount is, whoa, it's a Polaris mount and they're highly regarded. It's uh, extremely well made, a little heavy, and, you know, and for something that's supposed to be portable, this thing is a bit chunky. Although it's not that much more than the TS-65P. And the optics in this scope are really excellent. Um, it's 70 millimeters as compared to 65. So you put it next to a, a TS-65P, it's basically the same scope. It's got nice, here are the locks here. This is a highly regarded mount. Very well made. It's sturdy. It really gives you a feeling of security. It's very nice. These two things up here are for a guide scope. I'll show you uh, my example of a, of a guide scope I made for it. This is the polar alignment scope for this. It goes here in the back. And you use a uh, little Allen wrench to tighten it up. You can see that it's a bit of an afterthought on this mount and the TS-65P type. It's inserted, it's actually installed and you never remove it. For this one, you're going to remove this if you're going to travel with the scope. So you're going to be taking that out, which means that it may lose its adjustment. This whole thing is a bit of a pain. It works fine, the scope works fine and everything. But you can tell that this was an innovation that they, uh, they thought of later. It was an afterthought. For polar alignment, you have a couple of uh, azimuth adjustment bolts here, push bolts, fairly standard arrangement nowadays. Um, so that's how you set that. And for this, you've got a similar kind of uh, more or less modern arrangement where you can change, you have to loosen the nut back there. You can change the altitude that like so. So it's not bad, works fine. In the bad old days of film, you could Take an outfit like this, far from the city lights, load up some film in your camera, and then prepare to just stare through this eyepiece for 10, 15, 20 minute exposures, turning this knob, can you imagine? If you've got a bright enough guide star in here and everything is mechanically sound, you can actually do that. But believe me, it is not trivial. There are a lot of things that can go wrong. This thing can shift on you a little bit, even the slightest little shift through this uh, focal length of a, a telephoto lens will really give you some noticeable changes. One of the most important things though is every time you turn this, you're introducing a little bit of shake. Uh, it's unavoidable. Those, those stars are gonna move a little bit. If you have a clock drive, that's better. But even with a clock drive, this thing is not trivial. 
I'm more likely to have success with this kind of an outfit because now I'm guiding with the main scope and I'm shooting through the little auxiliary scope with a shorter focal length. The shorter the focal length, the better as far as guiding is concerned. And this is a special device for guiding. And this device here, you can put a regular eyepiece in here, like so. It projects a reticle uh, an illuminated reticle inside here into the eyepiece and you can adjust the position of the reticle So this is perfect. I wish I had had this when I was shooting this kind of stuff back in the day um, This is this is nice So now you've got a much better chance of actually making some You know properly being able to track the thing even so it's going to require some care turning this right ascension you probably never ever want to touch the declination. Every time you touch the scope, see, I just touched it. Okay, <laughs> that could introduce some sort of a shake. So, um, and that'll cause the, the cause the stars to blur. So, uh, if you want a good image, a good sharp image, you probably avoid touching this this thing unless you absolutely had to. You turn it very slowly for guiding. I'm much more likely to get a good shot with this kind of an outfit. I've got a 50 millimeter lens and I can track this thing. This will give me plenty of focal length to track just fine for a 50 millimeter lens. Any slight shakes I introduce when I'm moving the scope won't really make too much difference on a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, so this is the kind of thing where you could do piggyback astrophotography hand tracking, maybe make 15-20 minute exposures, and you could make some pretty decent shots with an outfit like this. Now I've got this thing on my back. This weighs about 37 pounds. I could probably carry this for maybe half a mile. <laughs> Here it is, suitcase style. This would be uh, okay, but just, just for a short distance. Okay, let's unpack this. First we start with the zippers. Here in these pouches we've got that and those. And zip this. There's a nice thick hunk of pad here which is absolutely necessary. You've got these legs right there. Here's the telescope OTA and the mount on that. This is all your eyepieces, goodies, things like that. Here's the OTA. I really do not like the fact that the OTA is, OTA is mounting right up against this mount here. There we have it. There we are, all set. This little thing is awfully short for a regular use on this little mount. So I bought some longer legs. This is a little bit better now for standing observing. This Polaris mount is a very, very nice mount, well made. Um, and it's kind of a classic mount, but it's got one problem, and that is that this is very old fashioned. And uh, I made an adapter, you know me, so I made an adapter to put a standard Vixen clamp on there. They also sell these. These, these mounts are so popular and so useful that a lot of people want to adapt them to something a little bit more modern. So they'll buy uh, an adapter like this. I think you can get one for 70 or $80. I made this one, of course.
Now you can put anything with a Vixen dovetail on this mount. It's not too heavy. Here it is with a 4 inch ED Apple on it. I don't think I'd want to go much bigger. I've got the counterweight extended all the way down. But it's fine, the mount is well up to it. It's a good sturdy mount. Here are the accessories that come with this scope. First we start with the Tupperware, the lovely triangular Tupperware that uh, holds all these accessories. Here we have a right angle. This is actually just a standard right angle prism, but it screws on and that's where the eyepiece adapter goes. Here's a straight through adapter. Tips for the feet. Here's the Polar Finder and the Allen wrench for the Polar Finder. A couple of eyepieces here. We've got an ortho, 5mm ortho. And 20mm Kellner. These are very nice eyepieces, by the way. And that goes right in the Tupperware. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the cute little Vixen SA-70S from 1979-1980. Thank you for watching.